In this photo retouching video, I'm going to show you how to clean up a really badly damaged color issue, as you can obviously see here. Now keep in mind, when the original photographer took this picture, this was not an orange sky, like on a nuclear winter or whatever. This was a nice dark, dark blue car on a sunny day with lots of sunshine. We need to make sure this car looks like that again. So first thing I'm going to do is obviously rotate the image. This image is crooked as you can see along the bottom. So I'm going to click on my crop tool. Then I'm going to come up to the top and click the straighten icon right there. So now when I take my cursor, like a tape measure, I'm going to put it right on the bottom edge of the photo and drag. I'm going to drag a long line so I can measure the bottom angle of that photo. And when I let go of the mouse, Photoshop is going to rotate at the opposite angle to straighten it out. So now I have to pull the corners in just inside the edges of the photo like that. You don't want to have a little sliver of white space coming down the side. So I'm going to make sure I just go inside the edge there. And I'll come up just inside the edge right there. All I have to do is hit enter or return to accept the cropping. And now I have a problem with the corners. But in my evaluation, luckily all four corners are plants. So I'm simply going to zoom in a little bit. Go to my clone stamp tool. And I'm going to test out the brush tip. I'm going to hold control and option on my Mac. Make sure my brush isn't too big. So I'll hold control and option and drag to the left. I want to make sure I drag up. So I have a soft edge brush. On a PC, that would be um, Control Alt and your right click on your mouse to resize your brush. I'm gonna go right about there. Now on my Mac again, I'm gonna hold Option on your PC, that would be your Alt key. That'll give me my target. Click on Clean Grass. Let go of the option or alt key, move your cursor to the damage, and then paint. And I'm going to do that on all four corners. So I can hold my space bar and push this over. Option or alt click on the clean grass. Then let go, come over and paint over the damage. I'll come up here. Option or alt click. Then I'll come over and paint some of that damage right up there. And if you miss, you just go back, Option, Alt, Click, and just do it again. And I'll come across here. Option or Alt, Click at the base of the tree. Then I'll come up and paint over that damage area right there. So now when I zoom out, I have all four corners touched up. Okay, that looks great. I'm going to come in on my layers, and now that I've straightened it out, touched up all the corners... I want to make a copy of this layer. I tend to retouch photos in a series of steps. So I'm going to hit Command J on my Mac. That would be Control J on your PC to make the original jump up to another layer. And what I want to do is try to color edit all this orange that's coating this photo. So I can obviously try some of the um, easier features like image menu, auto color, but that color doesn't look right. So I'm going to go to edit and undo. Then I can try image menu, adjustments, levels. But when I take my dark slider, that's just going to make it darker reddish orange. If I take my light slider, that's just going to still intensify the color that is already in there. So that's not going to work. I'll try image menu adjustments, hue and saturation. I can take the master and come down to the reds and desaturate those reds. 
but that photo looks just really old and dull and washed out. So that's not going to work. I can try image menu, adjustments, photo filter. And instead of more orange, I can try to cool down the colors. Those don't work. You can barely notice the difference. Even if I crank this up, then the photo would just turn more blue or pink. So I'm kind of stuck. So I want to make you aware that there is one extra feature that a lot of people overlook, and that is image menu, adjustments, levels, one more time. And I have these three little eyedroppers. Okay, the one on the far right is your white point sampler. So I'm going to click that. And basically, I click on the whitest part of this photo. So I'll click on this white car back here. That is the brightest, whitest pixel. Then I'm going to come to the far left, click on the black point slider or eyedropper. And the blackest point on this photo would be right up above this front wheel, way back in the wheelbase here. So I'm going to click there or the wheel well, and I'm going to click right there. All the color editing magic is going to come in when I take my gray midpoint slider or eyedropper. I keep saying slider because I'm looking at these sliders here, but that's an eyedropper. What it wants me to find is a gray element in this photo. So obviously I wouldn't click on the wooden gate or the green lawn, but I do have a street which is gray asphalt and I have a little oil stain in the street. So I'm going to click right there and look at that. I have that dark blue car on a green lawn. That's looking good. That reddish tone is really washed out. I like that. If you didn't get exactly the same, just keep clicking on these little areas to eventually get a good neutral color tone. I'm going to go with that. I like that. So I'm going to click OK. The photo, unfortunately, is really dark. And when people take photographs of their cars, they love their cars. They wash their cars every weekend. They wax their cars. They polish them. And this doesn't look very polished. It looks really dull. So again, I'm going to hit Command J on my Mac to jump to another copy of that layer. That would be Control J on your PC. And now I'm just going to add some more sunlight to this by going to Image Menu, Adjustments, Shadows, and Highlights. You'll see that scene light up right there. So because of my um, recording space, I got a little bit less room on my monitor, so we'll move this over here. I can drag my radius to the right and let go, see what that will do. But I like that kind of a brighter image over here. You can fine tune it how you want, but I'm going to click OK. Now, what I also want to do is check out the damage, the surface damage on this photo. This was printed 30, 35 years ago on that cheap, dimpled canvas Kodak paper. And those little dimples in the paper create all these little shadowy dimples on the final scan. And that texture just doesn't look good on this photo. So in order to get rid of that texture, I'm going to come up to Filter, Camera, Raw, Filter. And I'll move this over in my projector screen here. So we've got a preview of our photo. In this newest version of Camera Raw, there used to be a series of buttons right over here, but now they have taken those out. You only have a couple of them over here. And let me see if I can get this over so I can show you that little pop-up. Um, apply the previous settings, but I don't want to do that because I don't remember what I did previously here. So I don't have a way to kind of reset things right now. Reset to default just isn't showing up. So I'm going to keep it right here. We'll go with this. And all I want to do is instead of these controls over here, I'm going to come over here and go down to my detail section. 
the details on this photo are not looking good. So I'm going to go to my detail. Right down here, I have noise reduction. Noise is like film grain, or in this case, this texture that's laying on top of my photo. So I'm going to drag the noise reduction way over to the right, maybe around 80. You can see this starting to smooth out. To smooth that out even more, I'm going to go to the detail and drag it to the left. I want to smooth out so I see even less detail in those bumps. Now keep in mind, I'm not going to be able to get rid of every single bump. Okay, I just want the majority of this photo to look a little cleaner. So when I do that, I start to get these little green blobs of color here and there. So I'm going to go to the color noise reduction and drag that up. So I smooth out the colors here so I don't get blobs of green and things like that. I can lower the detail of some of those blobs. And this looks pretty good visually. Okay, got a lot smoother car. I'm not getting so much of that texture in there. There will be some, but I can get rid of the majority of it. And I'm going to go with that. I'm going to click OK. So now my photo updates. I zoom out and I can see a little hint of blue in this car. That's from the reflection of the sky above. And I want a little bit more of that blue to stand out. So right above my type tool, I press and hold. I've got a dodge tool to make areas brighter, a burn tool to make areas darker, and in my case, a sponge tool. Okay, by default, the mode of the sponge will be sat, uh, desaturate. The sponge tool wants to suck the color out of this photo. I don't want to bring color out. I want to put color back in. So I'm going to set the mode of my sponge to saturate the color. And I'm going to set the flow to its default of 50. So we'll see what that does. It's not too weak and it's not too strong. I'm going to take my sponge tool right here. Hold my control and option key on a Mac. That would be control and alt key on your PC. And you right click on your PC to make your brush bigger or smaller. I'll make it kind of big. And with one long continuous drag, I'm just going to click and drag and drag and drag and drag and drag right over those upper edges of the car like that. Okay, I can start to see a little bit more blue, and that's good. I see a little bit. I didn't go overboard. So I'm going to kind of polish this car again. I'll click and drag right here, and one continuous line. Just bring out a little more hint of blue in there. I can zoom in, and with my sponge tool as well, I can make the brush smaller, just kind of saturate a little bit more of that red and that blue on that license plate frame right there. Okay, if I wanted a little more reflective green, I could saturate that or saturate it in the wheels right there. You know, hit a few little choice little green spots on this car to bring out a little more of that reflective detail there. And the last thing I want to do is get rid of the stuff that the noise reduction filter couldn't get rid of. These big, bright, blue spots. Okay, so I'm going to go to the fourth set of tools down, my spot healing brush. And literally, I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see that. I'm going to spot out these blues. Just kind of paint right over them. Click, click, click. If they're just a little blue dot, click on it, click on it, click on it. And you can get rid of those really quick. Click, 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 click. And I'm just going to kind of scroll around and look for those little blues that really stand out and start clicking on them. So if I see any down in the grass, click and click. Here's a line, so I'm going to click and drag over that line. Click, 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 click. And you get the idea. Just kind of search around in your photo. Find any of these little blue spots that obviously don't belong. And go right over that part of the grill there. 
and let's bring that out there we go and we'll take out some of that blue right in there a couple little blue spots up in here and i'm holding my um space bar to activate my hand tool so i can just kind of push this image around like this search for any of these weird little blue spots that obviously don't belong in the car or out in the grass and i'll just keep spotting them out and i think that's looking pretty good for what i want to achieve here take that out so now i can zoom back out and i've got a nice clean crisp shot of this car now keep in mind when i did the noise reduction it is a slight blur filter to this photo and i think that's fine for an aged photo like this but if that bothers you you can put a little bit more sharpness back into your photo i'm going to do that on a copy so command j on my mac that would be control j on your pc again and now I can run a filter, sharpen, unsharp, mask filter. And what you want to do on this one is keep it minimal. I'll start with a radius of 1. That's your default. I'll start with an amount of about 70. It's around your default. If you don't really see anything changing, that's good. That means you didn't go overboard. So I can turn the preview on and off and really see if I notice anything. And I don't really. So now I can start experimenting. Maybe I'll push the amount up to about 100. I'll push the radius to about 1.5. Let's just see if I get something a little sharper and I can turn my preview on and off. I start to see it in the detail of the grill. There's before and there's after. It starts to sharpen up just a little bit and that's good. I don't want to go overboard. I think I could kick it up to two. And now I turn the preview on and off. You can see the grill. And that's going to be good enough for what I want to achieve. I've already set enough on this photo. I don't want to push it too far and make more damage again. So this looks much better than this original right there. Within the space of a few minutes. I toned out the colors, brightened the image, and ran a noise reduction, and then intensified some of the details with a slight sharpen filter. So that's what you're going to do to photo edit and color retouch this old damaged photo of this Chevy here in this project. So get to it. Good luck. I look forward to seeing your results.